Methods of investigation of heart. We will start with electrocardiogram, ECG. The ECG records potential differences caused by cardiac excitation. The registration of ECG is um, provided by uh, the leads by leads of ECG. The standard leads may be distinguished. The <coughs> standard leads are produced by electrodes which are laid on the limbs of a person. <coughs> the first standard lead is measuring the potential difference between the electrodes on the left and right arms. Second standard lead measures the potential difference between the right arm and the left leg. And the third standard lead measures the potential difference between the left arm and the left leg. Goldberg augmented leads in addition with three standard leads are called AVR, AVL and AVF. In, uh, in this case the ones the one points acts as the different electrode. For example for AVR the right arm is taken as the difference electrode different electrode and two opposite electrodes are connected and together do serve as the indifferent or reference reference electrode so what we measure in AVR is the potential difference between the right arm and connected average potential from two opposite leads. For AVL, left foot of uh, the foot is taken, and for the AVL, left arm electrode is taken as the different electrode, and two opposite are connected and do serve as a reference point. And also, there are chest leads or Wilson leads, which are called V1, V2, V3, and to V6. These electrodes are laid on the chest uh, in such a manner that they reflect the excitation on the front wall of the heart. Six chest leads. So the routine EEG, ECG recording is including 12 curves. The ECG, standard uh, normal ECG, ECG, looks like this. We have P wave, Q, R, S and T wave. P, Q, R, S wave and the T wave. The P wave is associated with atrial depolarization. The repolarization of atria normally cannot be visualized because it is masked by QRS complex. QRS complex reflects the depolarization of ventricles and the T wave reflects repolarization of ventricles depolarization depolarization oh sorry repolarization of the ventricles isoelectric line is distinguished isoelectric line and uh, we have on the ECG
intervals <coughs> intervals also distinguished on the ECG for example peak U interval is the time between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the Q wave it should be between 0 0.12 0 0.2 seconds the normal value it reflects the duration of atrioventricular conduction if the PQ interval is increasing more than 0 0.2 we speak about AV blockade blockade of the heart of the heart when conduction is prolonged between the atria and ventricle the mean QRS axis or electrical axis of the heart reflects the uh, average position uh, of uh, the ventricle and uh, it uh, normally lies between 90 degrees to minus 30 degrees in adult so the position of the heart may change it may be vertical or horizontal and uh, uh, the electrical uh, activity electrical axis of the heart uh, corresponds with this um, position of the heart it may turn to the left or may turn to the right maybe vertical uh, normal uh, and um, it may for example uh, turn to the left a uh, left type uh, electrical axis of the heart in the case of left ventricle uh, hypertrophy uh, left ventricle uh, is enlarged uh, in people who are um, training physically active or uh, due to the hypertension because hypertension increases the activity of the heart uh, and increases the um, demands of the heart during the routine analysis of ECG we analyze the uh, shape of the curve we analyze the source of the automaticity uh, from sinoatrial node from pacemaker uh, of the heart or may maybe uh, there is another source of automaticity we analyze the rhythmicity, the frequency of heart beats. We uh, analyze the presence or absence of extracystals. Uh, we uh, analyze the conductivity in the heart. We analyze the PQ interval, ST interval as well. We analyze the position of the electrical uh, axis of the heart vertical or horizontal or normal position the amplitude of the waves for example of r wave the amplitude of r wave increases for example uh, in the case of hypertrophy of the ventricles it um, uh, as we already told may take place uh, in as, as the consequence of hypertension the amplitude of R wave increases in that case it became higher the R wave <coughs> um, another method that is widely used is the phonocardiography phonocardiography is the um, registration of the heart sounds we uh, we may uh, distinguish several sounds we may distinguish the first sound first heart sound <coughs> first heart sound is called also systolic we may distinguish second sound it is called diastolic third and fourth sound uh, are not um, so prominent 
and usually are not it is not possible to hear them with a stethoscope but on the phonocardiogram they are visible so to record phonocardiograph phonocardiogram the sensitive microphone is used which is uh, pressed to the chest and the sounds are amplified and presented um, in the form of the graph of a curve we will draw now ECG with simultaneous recording of the phonocardiogram to analyze uh, the correspondence between these two graphs so we will draw electrocardiogram PQRST waves and below phono cardiogram uh, so first sound systolic sound occurs just after the R wave so R wave is produced R wave is produced by uh, the uh, systole of the ventricles and uh, by the closure of AV valves they close by uh, the ejection of blood into the large arteries in aorta and pulmonary trunk and by the contraction of papillary muscles and the mm, this is the greatest uh, the, the, the loudest sound in the phonocardiogram loop it is called loop and it uh, happens just after the R wave as we told so this is the first sound so it uh, is produced after the depolarization of ventricles depolarization precedes the contraction second sound diastolic is uh, first of all explained by the closure of the semilunar valves so they close during the diastole it is called diastolic when the blood is ejected into the aorta and pulmonary trunk the pressure in, in these vessels increases is more than in the ventricle so the valves close and we see the second sound just after the T wave uh, and uh, so after the repolarization of ventricles it is the amplitude is lower it is softer not so loud as the first one so it's diastolic sound uh, the third sound is uh, explained by the filling of the ventricles with the blood passive filling and the fourth sound is uh, produced by the systole of auricles it is also the quiet one amplitude is low so the fourth sound in different pathological situations the murmurs also occurs murmurs may be systolic or diastolic uh, usually they reflect the abnormalities of the heart valves stenosis or insufficiencies of the valves they okay they, again they may be systolic and diastolic uh, for example the stenosis the narrowing of aortic uh, valve will uh, result in uh, systolic murmur of, of course uh, other methods of heart investigation include the echocardiography it is basically ultrasound ultrasound uh, diagnostic of the heart uh, the ultrasound is transducer is used and it is the method that is widely used for the diagnostic of the heart valves it reflects very well the movement of cuspids uh, of uh, the valves also it may be used to calculate to calculate the stroke volume uh, general um, activity of the heart so it this method is widely used 
X-rays uh, diagnostics are also used, uh, first of all, uh, with the contrast to investigate the coronary arteries. Uh, to, 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 um, it's called coronarography, to uh, look for normal or abnormal uh, circulation in the coronary arteries.